ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Oh no, I just forgot to change. Give me a second, I'll be right back. All right, here I am. Now that looks a little bit better, I hope. Right, today, actually, I want to talk to you about being less fearful about money. Now, all of us obviously chase having more money in life, right? And that's one of the reasons why I have this channel, to invest more, to build more wealth and increase your net worth over time. But the reality is that many people who never were exposed to a lot of wealth are actually scared about money. Now, that seems strange and counterintuitive, but it's very much true and in line with the saying, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Now, imagine if most of your friends are probably around the same income class more or less than you, right? It's highly unlikely that you do a normal nine to five job and have a multi-millionaire, if not billionaire friend. And that's because those kind of people surround themselves with people at their own level. Now, obviously in this channel, I talk a lot about how we can get to this level by building businesses, investing smartly, being frugal in your life, etc. But I think something equally important is adopting the mindset of being wealthy already, because a lot of people are so scared of money that once they get near it, they actually get repulsed by it. That's why we're so scared to talk about money. And often a lot of people are very critical about the rich, about the successful. They point the finger and say, oh, look at them with their fancy Lamborghini, their fancy Ferrari or their super yacht. Oh my God, they're just showing off. Now, let's be very honest to ourselves. If we had that kind of money, a billion dollars lying around in the bank account, would you not buy a fancy car or a great house? Maybe, maybe not. That's a personal decision. But I think something very important is the ability of being comfortable around money. And that's why today I dress a little bit different than in my normal videos. Usually you see me wearing a simple black shirt, but today I wanted to dress up. In fact, actually I need to dress up because as a matter of fact, after this video, I'm going to a very high profile gala dinner. It's an annual charity affair where really the top business people, lawyers, politicians, the who is who comes together and being part of that really opens me a lot of doors and creates new contacts. And there, obviously, I need to dress and act accordingly, right? Going there with my sneakers and my black t-shirt really wouldn't get me very far. In fact, it wouldn't actually get me in because the dress code is black tie. And by being there, I'm obviously also expected to give a generous cash donation, which I'm very happy to do because it is a good cause. But at the same time, it really, for me, as I said, is a network builder. It allows me to network, put myself out there and get new contacts. Now, obviously, I don't dress up like this every single day and that would really be way too much for me and I really like to relax. Actually, my job, I'm wearing a suit every single day, so I really appreciate the comfort look of a t-shirt, some jeans, and that really makes me happy. But I have learned over the years to play the different roles, right? And I think it's important to play a different role in order to fit the environment you're in. And the first time I was wearing a tuxedo, I felt so out of place, so uncomfortable, and I was like walking like really strange, and I was acting really strange. I didn't feel myself at all. But like anything, like driving, remember the first time you were driving, you felt so out of place, but the more you do it, the more comfortable you get. So that's what I'm saying. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable. For most people, it's really unusual to dress up. But once you put in the effort, you will see it really is a game changer. And I challenge you to do the same. And don't wait for the next big gala event. Just take out your partner, a significant other on the next date night, go to a fancy restaurant and then ask them and yourself to really dress up to the very best you can. And you will see it feels so different but at the same time, you're really gonna feel great about it and you will see, you're gonna be treated a little bit different. That's why whenever I travel, actually, I always wear a suit jacket and a pocket square. And I really recommend for gentlemen, invest in a good pocket square. It can really elevate a cheap suit immediately. And simply by doing that, I have gotten upgrades to business class, even though I booked economy, I have gotten free lounge access. And yes, you may say that's really unfair, Kai, and superficial judging someone by their clothes. But honestly, guys, remember how I looked at the beginning of the video? Now, would you trust me with all your money if I was your bank? And I would say to you, give me all your money and I invested on your behalf. You would probably be highly doubtful of such a person. Or just another example, imagine walking down a dark alley and someone with a hoodie, the hands in their pockets, walks by you. You're gonna be very much on alert, right? If a nice lady or gentleman nicely dressed walks by you in the same alley, you'll be way less scared. So clothes and manners definitely have a huge first impression on us. And that's just the reality. So why not use that to your advantage? Another recommendation I always give to people is go to five-star hotels and just have a coffee. Now you don't have to go for a fancy meal there because some of them can be really, really pricey, right? There might be a couple of hundred euros and that might obviously be way too much, especially if you're beginning your career or you're saving for something in particular. So when I was a student, I also didn't have money to go to five-star hotels, but my mentor told me, Kai, go there, sit in the lobby, 
have a coffee which is marginally more expensive than a Starbucks coffee these days, really. And plus, usually you get a water, you get some cookies with it, and you can really spend there a couple of hours, enjoy your coffee, and just soak in the environment. And you will see how different people act. You become more comfortable with the environment. It doesn't scare you anymore. You see even those millionaires and billionaires, they're just normal people like you and I. You're gonna hear them on their phone, arguing with their wife or with the partner. They essentially have the same problem as all of us, just with a couple of more zeros on their bank account. Otherwise, they're just normal people. And by being in such an environment, there are also chances that you might meet and interact with some of those people. What happened to me, right? When I started my career, I actually met one of my mentors in the lobby just by being there and we started having a conversation and that really helped me a lot and he really truly inspired me. So even if you don't have money right now, you can be smart with your choices and get a little taste of what it feels like to be there when you have money. But then I hear a lot of people say, Kai, I don't really need this five-star hotels and so on. It doesn't really bring me any joy. Honestly, first of all, most likely those people saying that actually probably never stayed in a really, really nice five-star hotel. And I understand four or five hundred dollars for one night seems like a crazy amount to spend on a hotel room. But I can assure you, once you do that once and you truly enjoy it, you really appreciate that. And more importantly, you start slowly to flip your mindset because my biggest issue was also I'm very frugal. And I think frugality is good. But you don't want to be so frugal that you become cheap and people actually start pulling away from you because they know you're a cheap guy and actually not really fun to be around with. Now, I'm not saying you have to spend and invite every single person. By being in such an environment, think, how can I earn more money to get this more regularly, to be part of those people and enjoy the good life, right? Rather than saying, oh my God, I just spent $500. I could have bought groceries for three weeks. Yes, that's probably true. But at the same time, you're never going to get rich by cutting your expenses. And nobody ever saved their way to become a multimillionaire, right? The difference comes by earning more and then still being smart of your money, but not just by earning average and then try to cut every single expense out of your life. At the end of the day, we only have one life and you might as well want to enjoy it, right? We all try to work as hard as possible, but at the same time, I think we need to treat ourselves and enjoy a little bit the good life as well. Another example I can share about myself. Recently, I bought an online course for 1,000 euros. Now, actually, I thought about quite a while about this because for me, I've never bought something online for a course for that much money. Most of the information I could probably find on YouTube one way or the other. However, having a lot of friends that are way more successful than me, which really inspires me, I look up to them. And after speaking with them about this, they actually told me, Kai, for 1,000 euros? Are you kidding me? They had personal health coaches for 250 euros an hour. They have business coaches for 500 euros an hour. They truly invest into themselves because they know that investment will come back to them 10x, if not more. So rather than thinking, oh my God, I just spent the money, see it as an investment into yourself to increase your future earning potential. And that's what it's all about, rather than minimizing every single euro, dollar, pound, what have you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, goes back to building your network and meeting successful people, which, you know, some of them really are a bit more conservative and they like to dress up. They like to go to fancy restaurants and you may or may not like that. But if you want to meet those people, hang out with them and learn from them, you better dress accordingly, go to where they are. On the flip side though, if you want to learn from startup investors, etc., people who work in co-working spaces, you know, they're just working on new companies and starting things up, you know, there you obviously don't want to go dressed like this because there nobody wears any suits, tie, etc. They all come in sneakers, in ripped jeans, in a shirt, you know, having a beer and pizza after work. And that's totally cool. And I love to go there myself. I like to dress like this as well and then go and hang out with them. You really want to make sure you understand the context in the different situation you're in. But I think it's very important to be able to do both especially in times we're living in where I think more and more people are dressing super casual. Nobody really dresses up anymore. You see Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, more and more people are just wearing t-shirts and jeans and that's totally fine. I totally get it and I totally love it. But just like in investing, I like to be a bit of a contrarian and have a different approach against the masses. And if you dress up in times where everybody dresses down and the saying is you can never be too overdressed, you're naturally going to be standing out and people will look and talk to you differently. Now you may or may not like that. Just try it out for yourself. You will see how you're being different differently treated, differently received. One more important thing to mention here, I don't recommend doing this to post and boast on Instagram or other social media channels. You know, you should do this for yourself to build your network, etc. In fact, I've actually really removed myself from social media except for YouTube because I've really gotten so tired of people putting their best version out there. Nobody puts a picture of themselves being sick and bad, right? Everybody just puts themselves out there. Once they look good, they have an event, they dressed up, they have makeup, they just went to a gym and that's totally fine. I get it. But for me, I really noticed that mentally I felt always like, oh my God, why don't I have a six pack now? Oh my 
god they all seem to be having the time of their lives and i'm just sitting here at home in front of my camera and i felt so miserable at times that i really started going away from social media and not even posting anything or consuming anything only things that add value to my life and that's why i really love youtube because i have a few channels that i watch and learn new things that inspire me so when you dress up do that for yourself with the purpose of networking of building your connections and that you feel more comfortable around money and wealth for myself now having spent 1000 euros on an online course Honestly, most likely in the future, I will spend again 1,000 on another course or potentially even up to 2,000 euros because I know it can really help me accelerate my income, my earning potential, my mindset, my health, etc. So now I feel much more comfortable with such a large amount, which previously seemed to me outlandish and absolutely unthinkable to invest so much money in a course now seems much more reasonable. Now, obviously in the process and in order to afford such things, I need to also earn more, right? So I have to put in the effort and that's kind of, you know, what's fueling me and pushing me forward. If I was just being a bum, sitting at home all day, watching Netflix, eating pizza, I wouldn't have anyone pushing me. I wouldn't have the urge and need to get nice clothes, to go to the gym, to be fit and, you know, put myself out there to the World Wide Web, right? Because, you know, I would just chill at home all day. So I think it's important to really level up, be your best self, be the best version you can. And most important, always stay humble, especially if you want to learn from more successful people. You don't want to be cocky coming in, you know, telling them how great you are, what you've done. Always be inquisitive, humble, ask them how they got to their wealth. You know, they will be much more likely to share with you their knowledge and their insights when you're being nice and approachable rather than when you're cocky and maybe even trying to compete with that person. With this, ladies and gentlemen, my recommendation for you, invest a little bit into yourself, in your closing, and into experiences, not just materialistic things. I'm actually very frugal. I don't have too many clothes. I'm really not into brands. I don't need Armani, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all these things. I couldn't care less. I prefer quality clothing that lasts me a long time and looks elegant and is universal. Even my black shirts, they don't have a big brand that anybody knows or it's not printed anywhere on it, but they're not cheap, yet they last me a long time and they're really top grade quality shirts. The same with suits and smoking, right? That smoking I've been wearing for a couple of years now because I only wear them two, three times a year to have really for gala events or really high level black tie events. And I can always mix it up, invest in a couple of pocket squares and not the cheap ones from the China market. This is Hermes, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it's really worth it. People always compliment me on it because a lot of people actually never wear a pocket square and really it can make and elevate any suit immediately. And get yourself a couple of cufflinks, which can also make a huge difference and is a nice accessory to have. Once again, you can use them so versatile for many occasions and invest in a nice pair of shoes and already you're gonna look so good for so many different occasions. And trust me, people will notice and it will make a difference. With this, I challenge you to go into your city's best five-star hotel, whatever it may be, dress up a little bit more fancy, go into the lobby during the day on the weekend or weekday, depending what fits your calendar, and just order a coffee and then sit there and observe the atmosphere, see what people are doing and really try to be mindful of what's happening there and really start feeling more comfortable with that new surrounding. And then afterwards, let me know in the comments how you felt about it and maybe something you observed, maybe you made some connections. I'll be really happy to hear about your experience there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. As always, stay healthy, get wealthy and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.